Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, too, share some of the interest in this sort of crowdsourcing and would just flag, since we've already had some hearings on big data, to perhaps follow up at a later time to think about what opportunities there are in other areas. We're also looking at the data side and how we might be able to collaborate on this, to, on this worldwide problem. Um, and I think that's very important. For General Bolton, if you could talk a little bit about what NASA's procedure is for actually notifying our federal agencies. You get notice of a NEO. What do you need to know? What triggers a notification warning? And how does that actually work? Congresswoman, we, we, there are several organizations we notify. We notify the State Department, first of all, because they notify our international partners that there is an incident. Or, and this is not just for asteroids, this would be for a satellite that's fallen back to Earth or something. We've had to exercise that several times over the last two years. Um, we would, the first person I would notify would be Dr. Holdren uh, as the President's science advisor. And going back in response to Mr. Posey's question, there is no question in my mind who's in charge. And it's, you know, I go to Dr. Holdren because he pulls every, the team together, whether it's DOD and NASA and everyone else. But I, I understand the the thrust of the question. So we would, uh, we would notify uh, other federal agencies, FEMA, uh, the State Department, and, and then go from there. And it, it is scenario dependent. Uh, it depends on what the characterization of the asteroid or the, the NEO happens to be. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of saying, hey, we, we now have something else that has been added to the inventory. It's not in, a, in an Earth-threatening orbit, and we do that. Um, could you talk about whether there is an organized international warning network, or should there be? Is this something that's, again, scenario dependent, or is there an actual formal network? Dr. Holdren mentioned the recent meeting uh, in conjunction with UN Copuus that actually the, the chair was, was an American, uh, a NASA scientist, and from that meeting came the initial decision that we would organize and I, I can get you more information on, you know, what they propose because, it, like everything else, it's a proposal uh, for an international a collaborative effort to, to do this. If I could just add uh, one, one thing to that. Uh, the Minor Planet Center, which I mentioned before, which is located at the uh, Harvard-Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, is an, a formal international entity to which everybody automatically feeds uh, discoveries of, uh, of, of new near-Earth objects. So there is already a formal network uh, which functions to assemble uh, all the information uh, that's available from all these different telescopes uh, around the world, and even, even the amateur astronomers uh, know uh, where to go with their findings. They go straight to uh, the Minor Planet Center, and the Minor Planet Center then goes to the NASA operation at JPL, which is responsible for working out the trajectory in coordination with these other groups. But the thing that is new, the International Asteroid Warning Network, uh, which emerged from this February 15th meeting in, in Vienna, uh, will ramp up uh, this whole effort and, and will add, uh, I think, additional layers of capability as countries come together to say, given these current scattered assets, what more do we need and how do we get it? It seems to me that's very important for several reasons. Everybody's under budget constraints, so that we should be more effectively deploying world resources in this range. And, but also confidence building, which I worry about from a security point of view, that if other countries see this as threatening because we might use these technologies in some other way, it's going to be vitally important that we are sharing in a way that, in fact, respects the assets other countries have, and we all get the benefit for worldwide resources. So if you have specific proposals as the outcome of the Vienna conference goes forward, I hope you'll come back to us to help us bring those forward to leadership about new opportunities, but in fact will be life-saving and you know, planet-saving potentially, but that will allow, will require greater collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you.